Following the first significant clash of arms between the rival warlords, which occurred seven years ago, the two have been fighting minor battles in their contest over Xi and Xi provinces. Tadun was well known for his ferocity, wisdom and command skills amongst the Wuhuan people. He not only ruled over the Wuhuan and Liao Xi, Yu Bi Peng, Yu Yang and Shang Gu, but also supported Yuan Shao in the ongoing power struggle. Despite numerous setbacks, the White Horse General still had a large army, which could cause trouble for the scion of the esteemed Yuan clan if not finished off. After his recent military defeats, in addition to famine in his lands, Gong Xunsan decided to secure his supplies by building a fortress at Yijing, where he, his family and generals lived. There were ten moats around the fortress, guarded by large towers with iron doors, scattered around on top of mounds. He had huge supplies of grain stockpiled to live out the civil wars, but he allowed his army to act independently, thinking they would fight harder as they had no other choice. It turns out many of them killed their commanders then surrendered, or died easily whilst fighting. Wang men switched sides, then led 10,000 troops against his former master, but Tian Yu was able to shame him into retreating. In time, Yuan Shao's 100,000 Wuhuan forces and 7,000 Xianbei cavalry reached the gates of Yijing, but the fortress withstood several attacks for years, up until 198. Gong Sunzan had a plan to break through the siege to attack Yi, cutting off Yuan Shao's line of retreat, forcing him to abandon his attack. He sent his son Gong Sunshu out of the city to seek aid from their ally Zhang Yan and his Heishan bandits, but Guan Jing advised against it. He said the defenders of the fortress were only willing to defend so long as Gong Sunzan was there. If he left, they could not be relied on to hold their position. As such, Gong Sunzan ordered his son to lay an ambush of 5,000 elite cavalry on low ground, north of Yijing. The two armies would communicate with signal fires to surround Yuan Shao's army, but when a messenger was captured, the plan was discovered. Yuan Shao laid his own ambush, then signalled Gong Sunzan to charge out of the city gates straight into a trap. Gong Sun Shu made haste to go and meet up with Zhang Yan, as the remaining troops were either defeated or forced back inside Yi Jing. Yuan Shao swiftly followed up his attack. Tunnels were dug under the walls, which went all the way to the centre of the fortress. They had support beams which were later set alight, causing the walls to cave in and the towers to crumble. Realising his doom, Gong Sun Zan killed his sisters and wives, and then committed suicide by setting himself on fire. The invaders climbed into the citadel, then cut off Gong Sun Zan's head to have it sent to Xu Chang in order to report victory to the imperial court. Guan Jing felt his advice had doomed his lord, and expressed regret that he could not convince him to stay in the end. He rode his horse straight into the enemy army to his death, intending to follow Gong Sun Zan into the afterlife. Dian Kai also fought during this battle, where he was ultimately killed in action. By the time Gong Sun Shu and Zhang Yan arrived with 100,000 troops, the citadel had fallen and their commander had committed suicide. Gong Sun Shu eventually met his end at the hands of the Tuga, a Xiongnu tribe. By early 199, Yuan Shao had completely defeated Gong Sun San and held absolute power over the four provinces north of the Yellow River. He established an alliance with the Wuhuan tribes on the northern frontier, then turned his attention towards Cao Cao. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.